Right, so hello viewers and welcome to Ultimate General Gettysburg. I'm your host, Pipuju Chu, and today we'll be doing sort of a first impressions uh, let's try video for this recently released uh, Steam Early Access game. It's a sort of a, I'd say more of a uh, Total War-esque uh, Civil War battle game, although it's kind of in this Pseudo 2D, 3D type of mode, and overall I think it's uh, currently pretty fully featured for, for a sort of a $10 game, and it definitely has a lot of content, but I think that the actual gameplay needs quite a bit of work here and there. So, anyhow, the uh, the history behind it is that this game is about, of course, the American Civil War, and it's focused upon the Battle of Gettysburg, not the campaign, because there's a there's a campaign for Gettysburg, and there's also the uh, the actual battle, if I recall right. And this game focuses upon the three day battle, and it so happens to have a campaign uh, that's this fight a new campaign button on the Battle of Gettysburg. So anyhow, uh, currently I have uh, sort of already gone through this list once and the game has a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different interesting maps to sort of play these battles on, but unfortunately the, um, the gameplay isn't say optimal. I'll start up the new campaign and I'll show you guys uh, how that works and how the ge how the general game flow is that it's it's a pretty historical game and they've nailed down a, f a couple of the, of those elements and I'll tell you right away here the Union here which was of course the the North inside the Civil War they have better artillery and better rifles but their army generals and their troops generally weren't up to standard with the Confederates and likewise you know the opposite sort of applies there and we'll start up the Confederate campaign seeing as how they gain the uh, the or rather they get the most action early on inside this sort of campaign and we'll start off the game like such. Now, uh, an interesting portion of the game is that it does something very, very neat for the difficulty sort of slider. You can choose between, say, a different uh, AI profile, depending on how you want the thing to uh, sort of play out, and we'll go with a cautious sort of... Um, a, um, a union leader for now but yeah it's definitely neat and has uh, quite a few different profiles for the AI we'll just really go to battle here right so we're playing the first scenario arriving at Gettysburg and we'll start off as the Confederates of course currently we have right around 4,000 troops at the field with 20 guns and we're expected to be reinforced with a similar uh, force with 4,000 reinforcements and 16 guns the union starts off with half our numbers but they gain many many more troops as this battle develops and the general idea of this is that I mean the Battle of Gettysburg. To if I'm if I'm I'm not uh, particularly like sure about this period of time, but Battle of Gettysburg sort of developed out of just sort of a minor sort of in engagement between two forces, and sort of developed into a really big one. Right. So begin the game here. I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna show you guys the uh, the map that this battle is being played upon. It's quite a massive one. This is only a, I believe a section of the master map. So yeah, it's quite big. Uh, we have our troops, of course, over here. And the, the Union has their troops deploying over here. And, well, let's jump back in. Let's just really check out what we have. Because the Union does like to start to shell us at the very start of the game. Right away, like that. Right. So we have, um, yeah, the, the Unions are, or rather, the uh, the units inside the game are effectively marked with these icons. They'll have a name at the bottom and then a number of uh, the amount of men that they have at the top. So we currently have two... Uh, sort of rifle troops, or rather line infantry sort of troops if you will. We currently have Archer's troop right here, we currently have Davis's troops right here. They of course vary in different size, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. We have a band of skirmishers here called uh, Heath's Skirmishers, and these guys are lighter armed, faster moving, but uh, um, they, they don't necessarily last too long in the uh, sort of melee troops. Uh, and we'll get these guys to come up over here and to go, we'll get them to cap this objective. And I should have probably mention this earlier, but our objectives for today are to cap um, this 500 VP location, this ridge location worth 1000 VP, and this location worth uh, 2500 victory points. And all we're really supposed to do is just to uh, effectively take these locations away from the, uh, the Union really here. So, uh, the game plays out uh, fairly highly polished here, where the movement inside the game plays out like a, like, a, like, a, like a touch screen type of game, where you sort of drag these troops around, they'll move and they'll do their thing. Our line infantrymen are definitely very capable sort of confederate troops, so we'll just gradually sort of 
push up the advance over here while our artillery gets set up and of course the skirmishers cap these locations. Have a troop called the 3rd Corps over here and these guy, rather this unit here is the uh, the HQ if you will, it's the general rather army leader or rather an officer and depending on where we move this guy he'll sort of surround troops with this uh, zone of control type of thing which will enhance their statistics which are let, let uh, sort of listed up here. Now, for whatever reason, uh, for my monitor, it doesn't put these up where it, it seems to have that problem where in windowed mode, and this is the only way you can record this game, unfortunately, it won't show you the very top of the text, but inside green we have the morale of the troops that's simulated, uh, like the, like the, sort of like the Total War games, actually, the condition for the troops, which is sort of a representation of their fatigue, their tiredness level, and their supplies. We also have their cover, so if, they, uh, if they're inside, say, like the cityscape over here, or maybe inside the forests, they'll have more cover. And we also have the reload, sort of uh, ammunition stat right there which is just simply showing you um, how long till they can fire again like here now, one of the problems of the game is that currently the combat is very, very iffy to, to sort of say the least, in that for whatever reason, the actual charging and the meleeing portion of the battles, they don't seem to do too much damage and you'll, you'll see yourself really focused upon just sort of getting your guys to fire off barrage upon barrage on enemy troops here and there. And here's a sort of an example of a brawl. Currently my guys are going to break soon on morale, just due to the cavalry charge and all, but currently uh, we're actually no, they're, they're not breaking. And again, like some of the melee things have some problems. They're actually, none of these two troops are taking any damage as well, so they're, they're really, they are, yeah, they're really iffy on that part where nothing seems to do a ton of damage apart from the cannon fire, which is one thing and troops firing at each other and I think that this is a this is a pretty big problem once you think about it because the confederates here were practically dependent on their melee charges Right, so I'm gonna get my guys to fire off here. Against cannons, it's not too big of a problem. And I wanna get these cannons to stop firing on my troops, so I think I'll get them to charge them. But again, this is going to do pretty, like, very, very small amounts of uh, damage. We have a group of, like, 1,000 troops charging a group of 50 troops. And as you can see, that, uh, that sort of loss counter bleeds down rather than finishes down, or rather than, you know, sort of spikes down. So we'll have to pull those guys back. And what we'll to sort of uh, go as is, and yeah, that is one kind of a really big downer about the game. Actually, it's just that the charges don't really function all too well. But anyhow, we we managed to do some damage there, and as you can see, some of the losses on the campaign map does carry over. So we did take down uh, one, two, three, three guns over there. So that's actually not too bad. Right, so our cannons are still, you know, cannons are pretty slow units, they're still moving forward, so we'll get them up here. And in the meantime, I'll try to pick off this group of skirmishers, which is uh, moving forward. And as you can see, once our troops sort of open up on these guys, it does a massive amount of damage. Cannons are going to do a, I'd, I'd say a sizable amount, but that doesn't necessarily say that it's going to be a, a huge amount. And the second thing is that the game does rely a lot on its sort of tactical AI to position the, the facing of the unit. As you can see here, I can I can direct their orientation myself, but it won't tell me which sort of side of this long rectangle is the uh, the front is one thing. That's not necessarily a big thing, but the uh, the main thing is that it's very difficult to just sort of get your orientation, your troops to just do the things that you want them to do in this game, unfortunately. Right, there we go. So we have your cannons positioned up here. They're positioned on, uh, let's see, McPherson's, or something like that, McPherson's Ridge over here. And the game works off of this uh, 3D system. As you as you may have seen here and there, when I sort of hover over uh, troops, some of the map will become darker than the rest, and this is just sort of indicative of uh, what the troops can actually see over here. Looks like the the, uh, the Union troops are actually moving fairly close to my line, so I'll get some of these cannon units to actually move forwards a bit. And this is because the cannons inside, inside the game are pretty neat. They can fire multiple types of ammunition, and currently what I want them to do is that I want them to fire the... Uh, the shell and canister types of ammunition. Currently, I believe a lot of them are firing the solid shot. They're um, they're fairly deadly if you can get it to hit long range types of ammunition. We will also have explosive shells, which we are perfectly in range of now. And we also have canister ammunition uh, coming from the Total War games. You guys may remember those. The sort of the the, the shotgun blasts from the cannon, if you will, type of ammunition there. 
Right, so I'm going to get my troops to reinforce my lines over here. And currently we only have one more victory location to take, which is the uh, the big one over here, the 2500 BP location one. So I'm going to assemble the rest of our forces down here. I'm going to get them to try to make a push. Now, at this point, I should actually also be receiving some cannons uh, as reinforcement here and there. Right now, it looks like that'll be later on. But once we get those, I think we'll try to mount our assault here on the Union's lines. But in the meantime, yeah, the game will just sort of... Um, It'll be this shooting bur brawl, if you will, between these two forces. And again, unfortunately, like, the, like while this game is very highly polished for, uh, for what it's worth here, sometimes the, the controls are just really iffy in how they play out. Like for example, here for the longest time, my troops weren't, uh, weren't even shooting. Right, so I think I'll get those guys to engage here. And sometimes the terrain is also kind of difficult to figure out how it works. It'd be nice if they had an overlay for that. What I want to do here is uh, I want to get my guys to... Oh, no, I want my guys to fall back slightly. I want my guys to just sort of hold these forested areas where they have a decent amount of cover. And I just want them to sort of stall out the, uh, the Union's lines over here. Right, so we'll have to switch over. There we go. Shoot them the hold order so they'll try to hold these locations. And while they press on Davis's uh, troops over here, I'm going to try to mount a, an offensive over down here. There we go. And perfect, it looks like our artillery is also uh, arriving on the scene, so we'll see what, uh, what happens from there. Currently, um, it looks like Davis's uh, troops are currently at 100 morale. They're taking a few losses, but they're not doing bad. So I'll try to keep them where they are right now. Issue them a fire order. I'll try to uh, really put some pressure on the enemy's flanks here. Actually, McGraw's battery over here could probably also use canister shot by now. So I'll switch them onto that mode and I'll get them to fire. We'll see whether or not they can fire with those uh, rounds. There we go. And as you can see, that really drops the uh, the Union's troops real fast. And perfect, our big stack of troops from uh, Pettigrew has arrived. So I'll get these two guys to move forwards here. Try our best to uh, really get the fight close to these uh, Union troops, I guess. So overall, I mean, it's a system that, uh, if it works, it's definitely very fun to play. But when it unfortunately doesn't work, it's uh, it's it can be very frustrating. Right, so our guys are going to advance, we're going to get McGraw's cannons to support this advance, and we're going to try our best here to just sort of get our guys maximum cannon support on the uh, on the enemy lines here, and really just try to bombard them down. And ooh, yeah, the AI, uh, the actual AI for the large-scale things here, are, it, it isn't too bad. It's trying to mount an assault on this location, and unfortunately it looks like they will, uh, they will accomplish it too. Gonna try to manage their flanks here. Try our best to uh, make this big group of uh, troops led by Baxter and Paul here turn around and do their own thing. So our guys are just sort of engaged like this. It'd be nice if you could actually detach uh, troops from the larger sort of sections here and there, because I would actually really like the ability to get Petty's Guru's uh, troops to detach a smaller sort of uh, force to deal with the artillery pieces over here, preferably in a in a charge order too, because I'd really like it if uh, they would be able to to take that area. From them with a with a charge where you just sort of stall them up with one. Right, so our guns have arrived, so I'm gonna get them to the field. Sometimes uh, this is I'm pretty sure it's a glitch, but if you try to move them when they're really close to the map edge, sometimes they just sort of get stuck in place. And with that said, I've sort of uh, sort of been hesitant on moving them there. Right, so our troops are assembled down here. I'm gonna shift our leader, Third Corps, as uh, is a uh, guy over here because our troops over here are starting to take some morale uh, losses and when that happens the icons will just sort of fade to white 
currently our guys are just behind this hill, so I'll move them slightly forward. Hopefully they can see the rest of the enemy troops, especially uh, cud Cuddler's uh, uh, troops over here, which are currently in a prime position for, um, for sh to be shot at. So we'll do that. And unfortunately, it looks like uh, the skirmishers over here have lost the VP location, but they pulled back. And as you can see, I mean, the losses inside the game again are—they're they're kind of weird in that they're always so little when when it uh, comes down to anything else apart from infantry fire and from gunfire. Right, so their troops are fine. They're probably not going to be able to mount an offense, so I'll keep them inside the forested lane right here, and I'll just see what what they can do really. So they'll do that. They'll fire off around, so that'll actually kill off quite a few, um, quite a few cavalry troops there. And we'll just really uh, go from here, I guess. And as you can see here, some of the buildings will actually block line of sight. It's a very, very nifty feature. Oh, it looks like the Union is bringing uh, up even, even more people. Right, so get Pettigrew's uh, troops over here to reposition themselves. Looks like they're bringing in their uh, cannon batteries, and they have 30 guns now, compared to our 36. And we'll try our best to counter them, of course, by bringing up a few guns here and there. And yeah, sometimes the tactical AI will just try to fight you like this. It's meant to be smart in that it'll face the enemy for you during these situations, but as you can see here, sometimes it's very, very iffy. But of course, that could be just me, because I'm not using the hold command here for these actions. Get my guys to advance here. And I think I've got uh, Davids' uh, troops over here to pull back in a short amount of time. And meantime, the Union army over here should be very, very low on morale and condition, so they shouldn't be able to fight any for anymore. Currently, it looks like Archer's troop is unfortunately all out of uh, condition, so they're very tired, where they're very short on supplies, but it looks like the rest of my men are fairly capable. Some of the artillery, uh, why not? Only Archer's troop is rather low on condition right now, so I'll pull them back. Keep everything else to the front. I'll see what else I can uh, really do inside this area over here. Looks like this area is actually starting to get uh, much better, so I'll pull back uh, Third Corps' leader and I'll pull him to David's uh, troops over here. Currently, it looks like we're actually uh, starting to really break these guys. I'm gonna issue them a move order or a full back order. Just for a slight amount of time here. Oh, perfect, the cannons are starting to arrive. So get them set up. We can also use a auto sort of select command for their types of ammunition, so I'll do that. I'll move them over here to where Pettigrew's uh, lines are, because that's where I want them to fire from. I think we'll have a few secondary batteries up over here on this bridge. And that'll be really that. And it looks like that battle time will uh, actually cap out here in just a second, so that will be, uh, well, effectively the end of the sort of the first battle here in the <laughs> Battle of Gettysburg. actually be a great time to try to pick off some of these uh, artillery guns that they have down here. But the thing is that if I did say issue them an order to do that, I think that it'd be kind of uh, risky just due to the fact that the melee brawls, quite honestly, they don't do too much damage is what is the big thing there. So 
looks like they're trying to move up on my side. So I'm rather surprised that the uh, the sort of skirmishing force over here hasn't tried to sort of, you know, exploit their advantage over here and move behind me. That would actually be a really great play, seeing as